welcome you all to half the vision expos team welcome 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 to our eye to eye happy hour series and behalf of happy hour series hopefully you have your drink like me and all the rest of the panelists have there so cheers to everybody cheers to the industry on happy hour uh, now as you can see well yeah salute 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 as, as as you can see we've decided to use zoom as our platform the reason why we decided to use it is for what you see right in front of you. it's community it's our iWork community. We can see one another. We can chat with one another. During this quarantine, I know a few of us are reopening, but it's been a while since we've been together and this allows us to be together virtually. So uh, please go ahead and use the chat feature if you would like. Uh, if you have any questions during the session, please go ahead and chat your question using the chat feature. Or if you would actually like to ask a live question and get on camera, what you will do is, is hit the participants button on the bottom of your screen and then hit the button that says raise your hand indicating that you would like to ask a live question we'll unmute you eventually and then you'll be able to come on camera with us now there's uh right now close to 200 people here so we might not get to all wow. your questions but we will try to as well uh, now there is a, an update going on with zoom so just in case we experience any technical difficulties and we get disconnected please wait five minutes and we'll and try reconnecting again if after five minutes we still have not connected, we will send you an email letting you know that the event has been postponed and giving you another day in time. So now that the housekeeping rules are out of the way, uh, we're very excited about this session and very excited about this moderator. His moderator is a good friend of mine, editor-in-chief, editorial director of I Care Business Net Magazine, no other than my girl, Erin Morgan. Erin, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Boy, that is a wonderful introduction, and I'll take it. <laughs> That's very nice. Oh, well, it's well, Thank it's, you, Terrence. It's well deserved. Terrence is uh, fantastic, and, a, and a, a <laughs> well, thank you. And it, we we love working with you guys, and with the Vision Council, and with Vision Expo, and and we're just thrilled to be here today. Terrence and I kind of started talking about this concept, you know, looking at the future of eyewear and the future of of design and the future of price point uh, a few weeks ago and thought let's put this panel together with these amazing eyewear designers of the CFDA and everyone has been so uh, gracious with their time and we thank all of the designers that are here today and we are thrilled to have this discussion because obviously this is something as an industry we're all going through together you know we at i care business have been you know and like everyone else in the trenches and doing panel discussions and trying to get a handle on where everybody's headed and and how to help uh the eye care professionals the opticians and the op optometrists and the designers and the companies you know through this time and and one thing i can say for sure is that i am incredibly inspired by this industry and how amazing you know it has been to to witness the innovation and the action and the dedication and the passion that has come out of this crisis and i have no doubt that we will emerge on the other side stronger than ever but it's great to have discussions like these to talk about you know where are we going where are we mm -hmm. headed and and this helps everyone so we're very fortunate and very grateful to be here today with our four designer panelists we have with us um, Gay Girardi from LA Works, who is, is down here, Gay, with her amazing background, which she told us earlier has some false teeth in it, <laughs> in, the, in your background there. It's an art installation, which has got a lot of different cool things in there. And uh, Salima Salwan from New York and from Salima Optique and Salima Eyewear. And uh, Blake Kuahara from Focus Everybody. Group West and Blake Kuahara Eyewear. And Alam Mane, Mane Plot, did I pronounce that correctly? Perfectly, yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, Alam is, is the designer of Alam Eyewear and uh, has some, a store as well uh, in New York. Is that correct, Alam? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So I just wanted to have each designer, you know, very briefly introduce themselves and talk about, you know, what their company does and, and do they have, you know, do you have retail stores? You know, what's your focus at your company? So maybe since uh, we'll start with Alam here and can you just tell us, I think your store is, is recently won a design award as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, it, it, it was, it's, uh, it's such an honor. We, uh, the New York store, who, um, which we opened uh, two weeks before the shutdown in New York, uh, has won um, best designed retail store in New York uh, by a, it's like a prestigious prize at, um, uh, for designers and big firms. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been such an honor. I mean, it's a very tiny store and I, I hopefully uh, you guys will visit it one day. Um, uh, what I do, well, uh, we, we created Alem uh, six years ago out of an idea that we can do the best eyewear out of France, uh, which we are doing. We are working uh, with a with really amazing um, craftsmen. So we do metal and acetate. Uh, uh, we have two stores, one in New York and one in Los Angeles. And we have uh, around the world uh, 500 um, wholesaler partners. Ah, oh, that's great. Fantastic. And so this, you said this, how long has the store been open in New York? So the, the New York store opened on the end of February, 2020. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's and, a crazy uh, time to <laughs> open a store. Yes, but you know what? It doesn't matter because we know, as you said, Erin, um, I, I don't want to take too much of, of, of everybody's talk, but we know we're going to get out of it so strong. So I know it's a bump in the road. I am happy and lucky to say that I didn't have any in six years since I created Alem. So I take that as a, as a resume of all the bump I could have had the last six years. So I'm fine. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay, and so um, I'll move down uh, with Gay. And Gay, can you just tell us what is, how long has, I, has LAI Works been in business? It's a long time now, correct? It's a few days. Yeah, we, we began uh, as, a, as one retail store on Melrose Avenue in 1979. So wow. 40 years plus. And we began our store uh, there. Um, and uh, what do I do? I am the founder along with Barbara McReynolds and a designer for LAI Works. And we also have a wholesale division of LAI Works, clearly, um, that has sells its uh, eyewear around the world. And um, like Alem, uh, you know, we opened in the middle of a bump in 1979 was a was a very large um, economic, it, it, you know, we were in a what it was, a, it was a it was a terrible time economically, but we didn't really even know it. And um, so that was that was our reality then, I can mm. say so we've been through a few bumps. And, uh, <laughs> and that's okay. Yes, that's and you okay. You've come through to the okay. other side. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you. And, and Salima, you have a, a, several stores. Can you tell us a little bit about your stores and about your um, wholesale, your design business? Uh, I, uh, found, I mean, I created Salima Optique in uh, September 1993, the first store in Soho. And I created my brand in uh, September 96, two years later. Today I have uh, five stores in uh, Manhattan and uh, a wholesale business. And I'm going to try, actually it's been very interesting, uh, this uh, bump, like you call it, Alem. I mean, this is for me the biggest bump because I live September 11, I was downtown. And this one actually is very, very interesting to like, uh, how do we say, to channel and to, learn, to yeah. teach you how to be slower, especially in a city like Manhattan, where the city that never sleeps, now we have to sleep much more, you know, and um, I feel like, uh, interestingly, I, I love retail, but I feel like I want to focus more on wholesale now, you know, and have mm -hmm. less yeah. stores. I'm like, why do I have five stores in Manhattan? You know, when you, when you close for three months <laughs> and you realize how difficult it is and you can't, you know, the rents are extremely expensive. And I'm like, why? What's wrong with you? Why did you open all these stores? <laughs> Try to focus on the wholesale part of it and have maybe two stores in Manhattan. I don't need to have like five, mm -hmm. but this is where I am. <laughs> right. Yes, it's a, it's a tough time. And New York is uh, open. Is it opening? Is soon, I just read. Yeah, we normally, they told us we would open uh, June 6th. And, uh, okay. But, but no, no, but then it was said that we wouldn't be uh, open, uh, opening until June 15th. And we have to be, like you said oh. uh, earlier, we have to be very careful. You cannot let in mm. 
more than one person at a time. You have to respect, you know, you have to wear the, the mask. The mask has been extremely challenging for me because I have asthma and I cannot breathe. And it's been uh, really difficult, you know. I'm like, I have to, to create a new mask or something. I don't know. <laughs> what about the shields? We, yeah, the that's shields what I, I was just going to say. Yeah. What I did, I ordered from Essilor, actually, uh, the shields, because Good I job. would like all my, yeah. my team to wear the shields. But they're not available until, uh, I don't know, like they said, uh, maybe a month. But still, the shield, I think, is really cool. It's much easier for somebody like me with asthma. Yeah. Yes, uh, Christian, yes. I just, we just... Uh, sorry, go ahead, Alan. I just wanted to, to jump on that. Christian Dalloz, uh, the French company that do our lenses, we only work with them. They do, Selima, you know them well. They do shield and they are available. Ah, they are available now? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes there yes. are several companies uh, that yeah. are doing the shields that are available now. So I'll, I can let you know, um, Salima, but I know Rochester Optical is one of them and uh, Safalo is doing them with Polaroid and They've been uh, supplying to Singapore because all of the children that are going back to school in Singapore are required to wear a mask now. A mask, I mean, not a mask, they're required to wear a shield, shield. to school. Yeah, I so love the shield, it, I think it's the coolest thing, yeah. Definitely, and we just did a um, live stream this morning, a tour of uh, reopening her business. Sheena Taff, the optician about town, uh, she gave us a tour on our Facebook page this morning, and their whole staff is wearing the shields. No ma the mask only for very close-up fittings yeah, and yeah. measurements, uh, but the shield for everything else. So, and they, yeah, it's it's a little, yeah, it's kind of, at least you can see the face. You yes. know, that's that's good too. Yeah. Yes. So, and and Blake, um, can you tell us a little bit about you and and what you do? Because you have ah! oh, there she is. Oh, love it. <laughs> She looks so cool. <laughs> She's the coolest, oh, this nice. one. <laughs> it's very chic. I love it. Right? I love it. Yeah. Better than that chic. looks great. Yeah. Um, my, my, I started in the industry uh, uh, in a little bit different way. I'm actually an optometrist, um, but I'd been designing eyewear about 10 times longer than I was an optometrist. So I was an optometrist for three years. I've been designing, actually this year is my 30th anniversary of being wow. on this side of the industry. Wow. And I'm involved in two separate uh, companies. One is my design company, Focus Group West. And we just celebrate our 11th anniversary. And I have the same team, there's 10 of us, and consisting of eyewear designers, architects, graphic designers, uh, PR agents, and project managers. And we work throughout the whole scope uh, uh, in the industry. So everything from on the factory side, manufacturing raw materials, uh, to retailers, uh, to wholesale companies and design eyewear. eyewear. We do branding, we do retail spaces uh, for them. And five years ago, uh, I launched my own uh, brand under my own name uh, with my business partners from Bevel Eyewear. I see Claudio down there. Hey, Claudio. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it, it started off really just as a, as a passion project. Um, you know, selfishly, I wanted to wear something uh, that wasn't available in the marketplace. Um, I love the front end of the business doing the marketing and the product, uh, but not very good at the back end, which is the business side. And um, Bevel um, provided that infrastructure for us. So we're kind of newbies uh, in the industry. Um, we're positioned at the high end of the marketplace. And um, that's about it. Wonderful. Thank you. You have beautiful eyewear. Well, everyone does here and so grateful for you all to be here. I'm going to head into our lineup of questions and Blake, I'll just kind of transition with you first um, since sure. we were just chatting about your business. And obviously with, you know, the COVID-19 crisis, it's been challenging for everyone, you know, around the world and, and, in our industry, obviously, you know, from the opticians and the optometrists to the businesses, you know, to, to your business and, and everyone's business. So how has it affected your business, your own business, and kind of, you know, where are you guys at? Um, you don't have retail, so that's helpful. But wholesale, I know, you know, we obviously saw, everybody was closed, so we saw a dip in frame and lens and, and sales and exams and and all that stuff. So how, where are you guys at with your own business? Well, I was actually in Milan, uh, pre-Mito, when this all kind of came down. 
And so we were having our international sales meeting in Barolo. So I went there early and wow. uh, was a little were bit of in February. Week. Yes. Yeah. And then we got the announcement that Mito was canceled and things got a little bit strange being in Milan. So it, I hightailed it out of there. Um, but these international shows are really important for us because we're a small company. We're a new company. We do have agents uh, in Europe and in Asia, but not all territories. So being able to have that contact with our uh, retail partners where we don't have agents uh, is really critical, critical for a business like ours. Right. And we weren't no able doubt. to reach them. At first, I think for myself personally, I was in a bit of a panic mode because um, our Barcelona office, our European office is based in Barcelona. So that was the first office to close. So we couldn't ship out of Europe. Mm. Our office in Kansas City was forced to close. Um, but at the same time, everybody was, was closed. So our retailers were, were having to shut down. So it kind of leveled the playing field in a way. Um, but it's, it's been a difficult, just like it has for everybody, because if your retail partners are closed, everything is pretty much flatlined. Um, in terms of our release schedule, we were very actually um, optimistic about 2020. So our spring release actually, which for us is actually a very large release. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously because of COVID-19, we've had to readjust our schedule. And we're still kind of figuring out because stores are just now opening up. Um, but we've shifted some of the styles to a summer release uh, for July, pushing some of the spring into fall and fall into spring. I think we've had to shift um, our cycles. Um, yeah. But that's also happening in the fashion industry as well, mm -hmm. where you know they used to sell bikinis in wintertime and wool coats in summer and now <laughs> finally having to be forced to be on schedule. I just read that uh, Vogue magazine and, and Harper's Bazaar, which normally releases their uh, September issue, their big issue in August, mm -hmm. they're now actually releasing the September issue in September. So it's wow. a lot of paradigm shifts in a lot of industries, including our own. So we're having to really look more carefully at um, our product offerings and our release schedule and make sure they dovetail what's happening at the retail level and at the consumer level. No doubt. And certainly fashion, the fashion industry as a whole has taken such a major hit from all of this and fashion retail has been, you know, really devastated as we see different companies going out of business or filing for bankruptcy um, on the huge retailer level. It's, it's, tough and and i you know feel very grateful that we are a medical community and and very you know obviously that's a that's a necessity um so that is is a benefit to be on that side of the fence for sure i mean it does um, so sorry go ahead i was gonna say we, we are we are well positioned that way um because we do come from a medical community and we straddled both worlds, the fashion world and the medical world. Mm -hmm. And on the optometric side, ophthalmological side, and even at the optician side, you know, we're used to hand washing. We're used to uh, making sure that we That's have it, yes, proper sure. safeguards. Uh, and hygiene has always been at the forefront of what we do. So I think of any of retailers, we're actually better prepared uh, to re-enter into the marketplace again. Right, that, which is true, very good point. Um, we had a, I'll just read a quick question that we had in the chat just related to, to what Blake's saying. Um, we have a question from Morgan Lee who says, are your collections usually already in process of manufacturing by the time big trade shows begin for an entire collection, not samples? Hey, uh, Erin, I'm sorry, Erin? Yes. Hi, uh, Morgan just chatted me, said she'd like to come on camera and ask her questions. Is that okay? Oh, great. Okay, fantastic. And, and Morgan is a good person to be on camera because I don't know if the designers know who Morgan is, but she was one of the designers who you chose to be the winner of the talent search uh, contest of Vision Expo this year. So she's from Taiki. And it's Hi. Hi. Thank Hi. you, everybody. Thank you. Um, Hi. Uh, lots of fun. Hi, questions. Morgan. Oh, hi. But um, I'm curious just how all of you as designers and retail store owners navigate through like the schedule of manufacturing. Um, as I am new, there's obviously a lot of hiccups, but I'm, I never really understood the timeline of the calendar. Like, do you already have your full collection, let's say 75% complete by the time Vision Expo East starts or Vision Expo West or Mido or any of those big trade shows? Or do you only just have 
your samples and then if it goes well and you know who your retailers are going to pick it up you then put a purchase order like how do you make sure that you're always um on schedule i guess for those big trade shows or i'm gonna i'm gonna take that because i come from fashion morgan and it's exactly the same question i asked myself so basically when i showed up to my factory six years ago in fact in france i said well, I'm going to do a prototype. I'm going to do a show. And if anyone buys it, I can produce it. They were like, ah, uh, no, ma'am. We, they, they didn't want us to do the prototyping and then buy after, like buy after the show. So when it comes to me oh, and to Alem and, and what we do is we, um, we already, we had the, the prototype before the show, we launched, we, we order the, the production. And then when we arrive to the show, we basically gonna deliver to the clients one or one month after, one or one month and a half after the show. So we already launched and produced. So you've already like, you're like 75% of the way through production. Oh yeah. Okay. So what do you yes. do? Like in this right now, 2020, if you were 75%, do you just, push your collection later in the year and already continue did you pause your collections how did you work with your manufacturer we didn't because first of all those you can't say to a to a factory i mean we we work with a very small ateliers in france you're gonna tell them sorry i'm gonna not pay you and i'm not gonna produce now see you in six months it's not possible we have to continue what we already uh, uh, started which is we take the production that comes and and it's our it's our relationship with our wholesale partner that will show the difference. And I want to say that's because um, I think we all of us and we at Alem took the decisions maybe a year ago, even maybe a year and a half ago, to stop working with a major fashion door, because unlike people with uh, optical stores, fashion doors need to swap the collection, need something new. It's a it's a it's a rat race to the new style, new collection, new color. And it puts you in this very, very, very strong spiral that fashion is actually dying from today. Yeah. So that yeah. is why we decide to not work with fashion doors anymore. Keep on working with the optician because the optician will have five, fr five, five brands, 10 brands, but it will continue working with them. In fact, when you go to a new optician and you say, hey, do you want my brand? They were like, ah, oh, sorry, maybe next year when I have to take one off. So this what i'm trying to say is fashion door today are paying the price of this rat race that push a designer into no doubt and that's that's a tough place to be for sure well thank you for answering that and thank you for asking the question morgan that was great um and you know since since you're speaking all i'm uh, can I just ask you how that the crisis has affected your business? And obviously you told us that your store was closed and now you're kind of reopening and obviously it's a slow reopen um, and one customer at a time. So it's not business as usual. So if I speak too long, please cut me. <laughs> I have a tendency <laughs> of holding. <laughs> so just say, okay, Alem. But um, here what happened. When we knew this kind of got happen and arriving we we saw it quickly we knew uh, that the virus we no one knew we knew it would be a pandemic but we see it coming so we talk to our team we we give all the cases best best case scenario everything is fine worst case scenario is gonna be bad um we uh we kept a conversation with our retailers and our um uh, uh reps so this is the two things we did first it's like what do you think is going to happen and what should we do? When it comes to, as a company, we never worked harder than this last two months because everything we didn't have a time to, we are doing it now. A B2B portal, a better processes, a better informative, uh, um, uh, like a, a better everything. It's, it's very, we, we took every step of the company that we always pushed down the, the to-do list and we worked on it. So. Yes, in fact, business is down, wholesale is down, retail is, is awful. If we look at, the, at that map, the number map, it's not happy. But what we did is instead of like focusing on the down point, we took the time and that time to produce um, uh, pillars for what Alem's gonna be after this crash. So right. it's, um, it's, it, it, this is all what we've done is it's, uh, I can't tell you today, 
I had, I was stressed and I was panicked and I, I had none of this. It, is, it's, it sounds so weird to say that, but I have an amazing team. I have a crazy accounting people. I had a production guy who's amazing. I had like people in the stores. I have like um, an art director, she's killing it. I have a marketing girl, she's killing it. So, so because I had this team around me, then we're like, okay, it's down. Okay, let's work for the future. It makes all the difference, uh, the team, and it's been the most challenging and hardworking last couple of months, I think, for everyone. I was in need of a vacation in February, and then this hit, and it, there was no vacation happening anytime yeah, yeah, yeah. soon. <laughs> so <laughs> I, about I, <laughs> I hear you, and but it's it's been so inspiring, you know, to to just see everyone innovating and changing and going to the. We're moving into a whole new phase of life, you know. It's it, life is yeah. is as it was is is not there anymore. Um, so let me ask you, Salima. You know, so you have the stores. Obviously, that's painful. Uh, you know, with retail. Mm -hmm and being closed, you know, but you also have your wholesale business and your stores are, are, are start to reopen, you know, how did you handle everything and your staff, like, you know, with just this change? Yeah, what happened is, like Blake, actually, I, in the beginning, I kind of panicked because I was, it was the unknown fear, you know, fear of definitely without knowing, you know, but at, a, at the same time, I have like, I work, I have a, the factory I work with is in uh, France and the other one is in uh, Italy. Then I had the feedback from the factories that were like, don't worry, you just have to be careful, things will get better. Mm -hmm. And also I have a store in Paris and I was, I was, it was funny because they were, we were like a week delayed, like the store opened last week in Paris. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. But wow. with everything, they were telling me when uh, this happened, they told me you have to close immediately because it's going to be really bad. On March 15, I told my team, I, uh, you know, like, now I heard the, I mean, I know the expression, I furlough you, you know, like you go yes. on a temporary leave. They should thank me actually because they're all on unemployment making a really well. Right. What happened with the, uh, I wish I went on unemployment like that. Right. <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's funny because they all like uh, they all left, and the problem in in Manhattan is like we don't have cars like in LA. Then all my team they all live in uh, Brooklyn, yeah. Yeah. So they're oh. and they're afraid. Then I cannot tell them to come back. I, I I haven't asked anyone except two people who live in the city, and they come and mm -hmm. help me because we're planning to reopen. But interestingly, I mean, as you know, Erin, I was starting this uh, collaboration that was uh, luxurious. We were super excited. We did the photo shoot in Palm Beach. It was amazing. We were like so happy. And then with, uh, <laughs> with Iris Appel, I, I, I think everybody knows her. She's 98 wow. years old. No, no, it's amazing. The woman is 98 years old. We do this incredible uh, collaboration. Uh, Erin and Terence saw the, the pieces. We were going wow. to have, you know, it was amazing. We were pre uh, ready for Vision Expo. She was planning to come after the wedding. I mean, anyway, everything was gorgeous. ready. And then when it happened, it was like uh, hard. Then Iris has yeah. been interestingly my mentor, I call her and I'm depressed. I'm like, I really I don't know what to do. Like, Salima, Salima, stop, stop. You know, this would be much better later on. Don't worry. She is so unbelievably positive at 98 years old. 98 years old. It's so yeah. Irish. Oh, when you've wow. lived on, to be almost 100, you've probably um, survived a lot of things. Yeah, you know, yeah. Which, yeah. I remember this woman the other day who survived the Spanish flu, who survived everything. Some people are so strong and so positive. Then I was like, how dare I am? depressed or angry or afraid mm -hmm. no wake up you you i'm like come on Salima. this is the time to change things and try to time. streamline your business and and think differently because i believe there was too much too quickly we wanted yeah. more 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 quicker more. quicker yeah. quicker and this was the, i mean we were destroying our planet now we all have to learn to be slower, to be like, and I believe that it's going to create relationships with our clients wholesale and retail that are much more profound. Yeah, and absolutely. I, I think it. Definitely. I mean, yeah. Like people calling I think me that's like a, That's a great, 
great, great insight, you know? Yeah. It's unbelievable. I think people, it's not that we needed it because it's horrible and people died from it, you know, but at the same time, Definitely. it's like the planet sent us a sign saying, you know, you have to fucking stop what you're doing because you are destroying <laughs> too quickly the, the, the world you live in. And then now I'm like, okay, I, I'm more like thanks to Iris and thanks to everything. And I feel, look at what's happening when you look at the pictures of the, the animals going, you know, everywhere. And in the, you know, people, we are helping the planet right now by having less pollution and things like that. And as designers, I feel like my collection is going to be smaller. I have the timeless pieces, you know, that I've always done, creating new colors. And when I do collaborations with like somebody like Iris, she's very... I mean, she didn't want more than four styles. She's like, that's it. We don't need to have 12 styles, you know? Mm -hmm. And learning <laughs> to work with that too. Yeah. It's so right. That's great. It's, so true. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> much yeah. Yeah. this is a Tunisian thing. It's not too much Tunisian. <laughs> you have to stop it. Oh. I was thinking the same. I was like, okay. I know, I know what I can do. <laughs> great, the great drink, insight. I'm going to take over and nobody can talk. Gay for gay. <laughs> oh my I gosh. Just, I, well, I just thank you for the like, fantastic oh, insight. Yes. Just the collection is true. Like, like lower the collection, not have 100 millions of release at Simo, Vision East, Vision West, Opti, Summer, Winter. I mean, it's been insane. It's it's so great that yeah. what you're saying is like yeah. showing now keeping keeping on style. Like yeah. and keeping can it style and yeah. add a little bit. Sorry, and I wanted to add something. Also, this cycle of ha having new styles all the time at every show, and we have like crazy million shows. I think it's too much. I believe in the drops. And look, I, I, I'm sure you all know the brand Supreme, and there's a brand called yeah. Keep. Drops. You do drops, drops. and you do them yeah. when. I was going to say again the F word when the fuck you want. We're going to have to censor this, Karen. Yeah, really <laughs> no, no, I no. I, no I, I, I knew Salima. I, there's no children here. <laughs> I, I knew Salima was coming, so I, I, li I limited her to three F words. For this Thank you. Okay, after that, after that you're going to get the I used already four. <laughs> you're going to get the beat. <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just move with Gay and ask her, you know, with your store and LA obviously, you know, is in a different place uh, than, well, probably is actually, it's a similar place to New York, you know, not as hard hit, but very closed down, um, you know, obviously hard hit for sure, but New York is, is a whole different story. Um, so how are you coping and how, you know, where, where are you at with your store and in your business, your wholesale business as well? Yeah, well, well, we have, we have a couple of stores, not too far apart from each other, but the neighborhoods are right. very different. So like Alam uh, on Abbot Kinney, there are communities around our, our neighborhoods as well. And they react in a way, in a very organic way, in the way that Alam uh, described for Abbot Kinney. But when we when we cl we closed down immediately, we closed down in March and the retail, and and mm -hmm. there very shortly thereafter the wholesale, uh, as as well, and um, you know that coping. I, I'm not sure. I have a lot of, <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, our concern. Our, our concern was really for our colleagues, our team. Uh, what they were going to be doing, how they would be, how they would be in this time when, uh, when we began re working remotely, immediately. So the only person coming into the offices was me. Uh, so I can, I live only a mile from from our from our uh, headquarters, and really from the the two retail stores as well. So for me, my my experience has been very different. I've left my home every day and come into work. Yeah, you know, I put myself in a little pneumatic tube. It just came down. Uh, <laughs> you know, a body condom, whatever you want to call it. I just came <laughs> to the store and I came in. And so, so, uh, so then, so coming here every day, you know, I like Salima was saying, she's doing it all. You know, it sounds so funny, but uh, you know, I come with my sign in the back of my car that says open for deliveries, meaning UPS and FedEx and DHL, this sort oh. of thing. And, you know, 
take the doors and all this by the end and the phone is this and that phone and even though we're taking all these things off site it's all of a sudden the day is gone by doing Jeez. all of the things that you haven't <laughs> done frankly in a hundred years and so um yeah. and there was something about that very 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 profoundly grounding and I was happy to do it. It was like a meditation, really, to be able to do those things. So did I, was I incredibly productive during that time? I can't say I was. I was doing, I was doing the work like in, like when you sit with your, with your girlfriends and you snap peas on the porch. That is what it was like for me. And that is what I needed to do, I guess, during this time. It was incredibly grounding and meditative. And so... Um, how, you know, we, we have, you know, a big part of this last few weeks has been the process and the protocols of reopening the retail mm -hmm. and by us opening and, and going through that, you know, it comes down to every plan you make. It, it was so important to make the plan knowing full well the plan meant crap. And because <laughs> along it really, because it was the planning it was the process of going through it and talking about it with our team and, and going through what would make them feel good, what would make it okay, what would give the confidence. And through that, you know, we, we learned so many things like the incredible amount of fear. I didn't have it, I haven't had it. I haven't, like ULM, I didn't feel that way at all. I, I didn't feel devastated, I didn't feel any of those things. And in fact, I questioned myself for I felt, incredibly devastated for the, our world hurting the way it hurt. And that's what was, for me, the biggest part. But for our business, I wasn't worried. And I worried huh? about what was wrong with me, you know, thinking, why, how can I explain this? And I don't want to feel glib. And I don't, I want to feel, and I am connected. And so through the, where I'm going with this is through the process of making the plan for the reopening of our stores. I think it was a real, um, it, it, brought a, it brought about a, a bigger understanding. And so, you know, everyone is in their own time and mm -hmm. everyone is dealing with whatever level of this it is. And we are, you know, as, as Wanda Sykes says, you know, we are not the same, but we're equal. And we are not the same, but we are equal. And we are learning so many things about each other that is, you know, in your bubble, you think you're all, you know, you're all like-minded. Turns out <laughs> we're not, but we're equal. And so, you know, I think that, uh, and this has been a process of learning. So how people conduct business, what they think about, what their priorities are about, who is made to feel whatever about their need to get back into the engagement of commerce and those who want to take a more Zen approach. Everybody's making some judgment about all these things. And I think we're all just, you know, taking a look and experiencing the process. You know, I've said before, I um, I have a view, for me, it's a long view, but for some would say short, and it's really about just living in the moment. It's today, it's the endless today. And that's that's where I wanna be, and that's how uh, I feel we look you know, at our, our business. Mm -hmm. I love this, Gay. It's it's great sage advice, you know. To, to I, I don't. Know. I mean, it's all we can do is to live in the moment and to just keep, you know, keep pushing forward. Yeah, it's, but oh, you know what I did want <clears throat> with regard to the 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 run, the run, the push, the push of of more, more, more product, 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 more. You know, we decided a couple of years ago. To tr you know, to go out of the to, to to go out of the stream of not playing to the show, and it's the new, the new, the new, and show me what's new and show me what's new. But that one that I just showed you, you know, six, was so beautiful. Give it a minute, and we decided <laughs> yeah, not just to, a minute. You know, yeah. not to go with the with the try to go with the flow of the shows. Like that was not going to be our introduction point. We were going to have um, a spring collection, and we were going to have a fall collection because that's where we were starting wherever the fuck it wanted to end as you said to use your words um you know <laughs> that that is what that's where we began and little yeah. by little you get pushed back in you get pushed back into that stream but no it is so for me to so correct so, so correct yeah, to make drops so correct to to look at mm. that there's too much 
there's just too yeah. much. It can't just be about more and what color was it? I no. No. Seems like, and, and, and we have to learn, we have to learn from the fashion, from the fail of the fashion yeah. industry. We yeah. have to see, it's very interesting because again, and uh, it's, it's a, it's, it feels like as uh, when you're in our industry, the eyewear industry is like, you're like, you have this uh, fashion, the idyllic vision of the fashion industry. I can tell you, I come from it. It's nothing yeah. idyllic about it. It's just a right dress. It's just a craziness. And as Gail, you said, and, and Salima, you said perfectly, it's just make it more, do it more, okay, yeah. do it, do it. Oh, you have nothing new to this season? Ooh, poor yeah. brand, they're probably dying. And all of this should, should finish. We should have a small suitcase with maybe 400 frames and that will be it because the rep, he needs to take those frames. He needs to show them to people. So basically it's not just producing more, it's also engaging the reps and the people to see like, five suitcases of eyewear and it become an over demand and over uh, like a throwing up style and sometimes they're not even interesting so i said that for myself even because we like you you run to it like i'm a new in this industry i do whatever my peers are doing right i'm like i want to be the same but in fact we backed it up because we understand that it's not really what we want to do and yeah so I, i'm so happy so I, we agree. Yeah. Yes, it's it's a great insight, and it, it kind of leads me to a question. I, you know, our next question, just looking to the future, and thinking about this, you know, with the product and the way that the cycle was, and looking at the new cycle of of how we want it to be, you know, with your customers, your wholesale, you know, your eye care professional, independent eye care professional customers, what are you seeing, you know, from them? You know, obviously, I had mentioned to you all before, we have seen through our statistics, you know, in sales and number of exams that we're reporting in eye care business, uh, there is definitely an uptick in sales, uh, in uh, exams and sales of frames and lenses and contact lenses in May, a great uptick over April and March. Uh, I'm sorry, in, yes, in May over April and March. And, but, you know, that is, it's not anywhere near where it was last year in April and in May. So things, you know, and obviously everyone's changing. Their business is going to be slower. We're doing, you know, fewer patients, uh, you know, who knows if we'll ever be, or if we want to be at the level of where we were before in that kind of frenetic pace. But so my question to you all is, and maybe we'll, I'll, I'll move to Blake um, to ask this question first. So, in terms of you know how you're seeing your customers changing your retail you know your eye care professional your optical customers changing and how that's going to change the way that you do business you know for what they need from you do we need less eyewear do we need different priced eyewear you know what's what's the future hold for that need i, I wish um i wish i knew uh, i think <laughs> i think everybody is trying to figure this out and it's a very fluid situation. So I think we're taking our clues day by day mm -hmm. and we're getting more and new information as retailers are starting to open up, um, not only doing curbside delivery, but also uh, seeing patients in store. So um, our, our account executives are in touch with our, um, our accounts on a regular basis. And the feedback I think that in general that we're getting is everybody's just kind of figuring it out, but as the days move on, they're getting more comfortable with the new normal. So, right. you know, capacity is reduced. I think there's gonna be some psychological barriers, there's economic barriers that people are having to overcome. So it's gonna take a while to get back, if it ever does, to the way things were when it was- they were. When it, when it was an open market. So we're adjusting our relationships with them as well. Um, so, you know, like I said earlier, we decided not to force down 19 styles in spring uh, to our sure. account. Nobody's prepared to, to put that in their, in their yeah. offices at this point, in their optical boutiques. And so we're, just like Alem said and Salima and Gay, uh, we're parsing and paring down our collections uh, so that they're more meaningful, they're more, uh, have more relevance. Um, I think the buyers have gotten accustomed to to just turning things over, saying yes, no, yes, no. I think this will force them to be a little bit more thoughtful in how they put the collections together. 
I think by Definitely. having newer styles or not creating obsolescence, we're putting forth what we feel confident in and feel strongly about, and that's the way our collection should be purchased, mm -hmm. um, not cherry-picked. I've never liked that way of doing business because uh, it doesn't represent our full collection. At this point, we don't have a retail store, so we can't mm -hmm. have our entire collection um, shown at once. So we have to sure. rely on retailers to be able to re represent us properly. I think as far as price points concerned, I mean, our price points are on the upper end. We start at about $630 um, retail. And, um, you know, that's, that's on the higher side. Uh, but I think the luxury market will always be there. Uh, you know, we saw that even with toilet paper. You know, Charmin was the first to go. <laughs> the, only thing I, the only thing that's left is like the generic uh, house brands. Uh, so I think people will spend. Um, ultra rich, you know, they'll buy maybe one Hermes bag instead of two. So that, that group will always be there. Uh, we did actually just by chance launch a lower priced category. It's, it wasn't designed because it's lower priced. It's actually called the gray label. It has a completely different design concept to it, but it just happens to sit at a slightly lower price point at about $525. Um, I don't necessarily think our, our, customer base is, is going to go down market and going to crave less expensive product. Um, but it does address the reality that uh, people are struggling economically. They're going to be more prudent with their choices. And I think that's really what it's all about. I think that, um, you know, I've always come from a position that I wear should be artful and wearable, that it should have a certain hand, it should have a soul to it. Um, and when you look at a frame, it should look like it was made with love. You know, everything that went into it. So when you touch it, when you feel it, uh, you know that there was a lot of care given to that frame. And so we try to build that into our product. And I think right now it's sort of like comfort food. I think people want things that are well-crafted, uh, that have a sensibility to them, that are, it's not cold and sterile, but have a warmth. And, um, you know, that's also in sync with, with my own personal design philosophy. Definitely. I think for sure the things that have a story are going to have much more, you know, and that kind of tangible feel to it, you know, is really going to have much more traction. I, I just wanted to um, mention that we have a question uh, from uh, one of our attendees, Alicia Rabb. And Terrence, I don't know if you want to go live or if I can just m mention it here, but I think it's a really... <laughs> It's a really good question. Um, and she says, since many things have shifted more online, do you think that there will be a need for sales representatives going forward? How do you think their roles will change? And I just want to mention this, that, you know, in our, in our work at iCare Business, you know, we've done a tremendous amount of research of the iCare professionals, the independent iCare professionals across the country. And obviously in this moment, you know, people would prefer a virtual visit over, you know, a, an in-person, lots of sales reps coming in in person. But at the same time, we held a fantastic independent optician panel discussion live stream that Sheena Taft helped me organize. And we had amazing folks on there. And every single optician said, I need to feel the frame. I cannot buy the frame without touching it. So, so I think I, it's a very tactile. Yeah, thing. I, 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 I think to feel the frame. It's not something you can always capture online. Um, no, I think maybe some product you can, uh, but I think in sort of our world, you know, you want to touch, feel um, the quality and the fit. I mean, fit is everything. It's not just about how a frame looks or how a frame looks on a celebrity. That's not how we sell our product. It's sure. About um, really, but there is also I I, I want to jump on this because this is exactly the conversation we had with our reps. What happened during these two months is we accelerated the process on creating a B two B, a portal for um, our wholesaler to order online. It was for some markets, um, Scandinavian German market, it was very welcome. For some more Latin market, more touch and feel market, Italy, France, Spain, it was like oh, I don't know. <coughs> the reps were not, are not sure that the, the client will actually go to the virtual orders. Indeed, it, they went. They won't go to the virtual order. They place the order on the virtual portal, but that doesn't take away the relationship right. with the reps. 
like a reps can just you 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 as as a wholesaler you on your computer you give a call to your rep what do you think the blue color the red color what do you think the shape what the fit it's a trust and today what we what we build is a trust you trust our brand like i will take an example because i have him in front of me michael cole from um uh, uh from a uh, rubber mark when you trust a brand you will take it and you know because what 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 will be the difference between this collection and the next collection is new design but you know the quality is the same you know that the comfort will be great because you know the core of our business is the comfort and the quality so yes touch and feel is important T touch and try is important but also the confidence you have on the brand and on your rep is important so i think the next the, i think the future of our industry needs to change airplanes cars taking hundreds of uh, suitcases to go show to somebody in new york or somebody in new jersey or in la it needs to change it's not sustainable and it, that doesn't cut you the relationship with the reps that just cut the hustle of hanging out with five we all have reps we have we all have independent reps they have five brands with them so every trip is is like 10 times the, the cases it's not sustainable it's not today we have at alm at least we reduce wholesale we go deeper you we we, we have a good resale pattern a, a wholesale partner we work with them we give them everything we can for them to do a great business with us and us to do a great business with them it doesn't need to be an horizontal numbers it needs to be a vertical partnership that's great well and i'd like to ask gave this question as well because i know you know you have um the foundry now and a lot of additional brands to lai works so there's a there's a broad level of you know product there and sales reps and and things going on so you know what's your vision for the future in terms of that contact you know how will people buy eyewear what are you hearing from your customers well, I think we're approaching what are the it. changes. Yeah, I think I think that we look we I think that we need to look at everything. I mean, LAI Works is born of the story. I want you to feel our frame vibrating in your hand with the story of something. <laughs> I wish and I, and I hope it does. And so that that for me is just the life of something that you make. And as a maker, as a designer, that's that's your dream is that that, that it is vibrating with the story and the goodness of it. For I think for this very new, unnormal or new, new, new beginning that we're looking at, I think that as as brands, we are going to have to, um, you know, we're going to have to prove ourselves again. I think that uh, this has been a long. Uh, this is going to be a real reset, and I think that you know that everyone. Yes, we we have friends and we have colleagues in the industry, and they know us and they know those things. But I think that for the the great, great majority of people are going to take a look at, at really what they're doing now and say, you know, I think it's going to be our responsibility to reintroduce ourselves. And I think that that's going to have to be done on all, on all the levels, by hand, by the tools that are available. And yes, if I can, if I can, you know, if I can fly you a frame and land it on your face right now so that you can look at yourself and we can talk about it on the phone, that is fantastic. If, if that's how we can do it, if we have an, an app that says I'm standing outside your store and I don't feel like I can come in right now and I can, you know, sh do something with you on a, on, a, on a device, we're going to do it. I think we need to look at all of those possibilities and not just assume that we're not going to participate in them until we've tried something. So that's where I'm at with it. I think these are all tools. I think the tools are valuable. I never think they're, I think that, you know, tools are how you make things and we're makers. So I, you know, I would, I would just say, you know, I want to access those tools and see what happens. And this is a new, you know, this is a new chance, a, a chance, a reset chance, I'm going to say that will take, and I want to take all those things into consideration. I know. Um, and I, I want to say also, you know, the, the, um, I have the statistics, which you're so good at, Aaron, and I am so bad at, but, <laughs> but, um, and I'm not data driven at all. That's just not my way, but my colleagues are, uh, in some ways. And, you know, thank God there are people on the planet like that, but, um, but, 
you know, everyone's talking about the massive amount of, of e-commerce. Still, you know, it's something like over 70% of retail is done in bricks and mortar. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So, Absolutely. Please, I mean, we have to have a reality take on that. So, you know, as the big giants begin to go away and it's happened in fashion, what are we going to have? Winner takes all by two fashion houses now? Really? Are we going right. to, is that what we look at? Two fashion houses that are going to, you know, fly the planet? No. In the same in the optical business, are we going to look at that and say, okay, this is going to be eaten up and this is going to become this and there's going to be two or three or four big players? No, we need the diversity of these independent makers, yeah. independent designers, and we need to use the tools that are appropriate to, to, to you know, to make us, uh, to make them, to make us all, you know, shine in that regard. And I think there's room for all of us. Fantastic. That, that's great insight, Gay. And, and I know we're probably getting a little tight on time because I know we were going to finish up, but we had some technical difficulties. So if you want to hang on with us, I want to ask everyone um, another important question. And then Terrence, if we have questions we, from the audience, we can head into those. But I, I do want to make sure that I ask everyone, and I'll start with Salima, you know, what, you know, we're, we've talked a lot about customers and the supply chain and, you know, kind of price point. What's your view of, how, you know, will we see eyewear design change or manufacturing the way things are engineered? Um, will we see any design changes? You know, in, in the short term, we're seeing obviously people are wearing shields. Yeah, yeah. People, you know, we now know that it's possible to get COVID-19 through the eyes. You know, yeah. you'll see people wearing more eyewear, which is, you know, <laughs> there's gay with I her think, shield. You know, it's this is a comfort everybody, factor. I've been telling everybody I've been I've had a chance to talk to, everybody should be wearing eyewear. I think actually it's our moment now because we need to, even if we don't have prescription, people need to wear glasses to protect your eyes from the droplets because you can get COVID absolutely if you don't wear glasses. You know, it's funny because when uh, this happened in the beginning, I got uh, like, um, how do we call it? Uh, conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis. Mm -hmm. I never had it in my Big life. Guy. And then I got it. Yeah, I got that. And I was like nervous. I'm like, maybe it's a sign. Maybe I have COVID. I don't know. I was, we were all scared. And we all thought each time you cough or you sneeze, we're like, oh my God, you know, we, everybody was looking. And I'm Definitely. Like end of February, beginning of uh, March. And then uh, I read an article about this guy who was wearing his, the mask, everything in the plane, and he was a doctor, got home, and then got COVID through the eyes. Then I the, read that too. Yeah, it's not, and that's why I've been telling everyone, eyewear is extremely important, but I believe that we have to produce less. I believe also that uh, because of the, not only the, what's happening uh, with COVID, but also the political climate we're living in, the craziness we're living in, people are kind of, down, depressed. I heard yesterday there were there was an increase in the how do we call them the depression uh, pills that you take. medications. Forty percent increase. Wow. Doctors. It's huge. People are depressed not only with COVID, mm -hmm. with what's happening in the country. Mm -hmm. and yeah. And um, then for in terms of design, I choose like gay. You know, because it's all about colors, being happy, being uh, you know, trying to be positive, sending a positive message to people. We're producing less. We're pro producing more ethically. I mean, we have to be conscious where it's produced, where it's done, how it's done, and not not do like this overwhelming quantities that. Uh, have been done in the past. I like the bespoke eyewear. I like also the limited editions. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the drops being <coughs> very ethical and um, being like using colors in terms of like making people uh, happier, you know. Happy, for sure. Yeah. So, and, and what's your view on that, Alam, as well, you know, in terms of how might we see design change or the look of eyewear? I mean, we, obviously full coverage is appealing now <laughs> to, to get on a plane or wherever you're going. So for us, it's, um, I, I imagine um, our glasses like uh, your grandfather uh, watch, That's something you're going to pass down to the generation. So we do, we keep on doing what this what we are doing, working with the best ateliers in France. 
craftsmen with the knowledge that it's unbelievable how they know. But we, it, and, and the word sustainability, it's in the core of the way we're doing it because we're doing handmade in France. So it's, it's, a, it's a, the base DNA of our fabrication production. And what we also done is during this time uh, of this two months of craziness, we have launched um, a, a, a program called the Reframe program meaning anyone who uh, is in a position of an alum can come and sell it back to us for a voucher. We take this frame, we send it back to our, fa we send back to our factory, the, our factory reproduce a frame with those pieces. We sell it back for charity. We give the money to no kids with anger, women shelters. It's a lot of women and, and kids because I'm a woman and I have a kid. Uh, but we, um, so it's called the Reframe program. So this is what we, we this is our impact to the, the what's gonna happen to the future is less collection, uh, more sustainable as, as we can every like, from the light, from the people that are working, pay well the people, pay the, the production, be, be, be thoughtful of the people you work with and also, be uh, um, wasteless. So you frame you have in your shell and you don't want to wear it anymore because it's out of style or whatever you want because it's blue and now you want to you want a pink. Well, you sell me the blue, I give you a voucher, you buy a pink one and I use the pink, the blue to make another one. So Very this right. is what we, we created uh, recently. It's so funny. Can I uh, interrupt one second? It's interesting because I, I do something similar but differently where I do, I take back the product and I give you uh, like a credit on your next product. A voucher, yeah. And yeah. Then, but the product, I, I keep it, we refurbish it and then uh, we donate it. And I've been very involved with the Robin Hood because you know what happened also, which is really sad, in this time of COVID, did you notice I, in all your cities, like how, ma how many homeless were on the street? Oh, it's crazy. Part? Because nobody's giving, nobody's helping anymore. Yeah, there nobody, is no people in the street. No money is giving. More people are on the street. Yeah. Heartbreaking in Manhattan. Heartbreaking. And in LA yeah. and I know everywhere. And then I've been involved with Robin Hood, like actually to raise mm -hmm. funds to give to the, for the homeless. Yeah. And mm -hmm. children. Selima, I had no idea you're doing this, but let's, let's be real. It doesn't surprise me. I mean, they're like, you're my soul sister and I don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's so so looking, uh, I'll just ask Gay and Blake one more quick question and then we can head into any questions, Terrence, that the audience has. But, um, and I know we're kind of pushing it here, but we'll just ask the last quick, last quick question. So from your unique vantage point, and obviously both of you have a very you know, long tenure in the industry, you know, what is your vision for the future of eyewear and eye care, you know, looking at our industry, you know, as we move forward in this unique time together, what do you, do you feel hopeful? Do you feel positive? Do you think that we'll see great changes or, you know, we'll get back to normal business? And maybe we'll start with ladies first. <laughs> Like? Be, be a little bit more specific. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, you lovely lady, Gay. Okay. Uh, I, well, one word. I feel very positive. Um, I, feel, I, feel, I feel very positive. I feel um, inspired to turn over every stone to find the answers. I don't know them. I know nothing. And, I, you know, I just want to approach each day like that, that this is going to be a discovery and that there will be goodness to come from it and we that we will find our way and i think that in the optical industry you know the, we were we, we we have a wonderful community the people are incredible um and you know we know that the, we know the love and the transformation that we can that we can uh, express with eyewear anyone in this industry knows it and that's what that's what's heartwarming about it so to that, I, I feel very positive. I think we're going to make our choices that are going to be more direct, uh, directly. Uh, uh, when I say more direct, I, I just mean we'll make our choices based on that. And that's, that's what I know. I know nothing else. It's good. It's good. Good words. Thank you, Gay. Appreciate that. And so, Blake, what's your outlook for the future? You know, like Gay, this has been very meditative uh, for me because, you know, I'm, I'm not... I haven't been in one place longer than a week. 
in probably <laughs> literally you know, 20 years. I mean, it's, it's really- Maybe, the, maybe the airplane was the longest. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I spent the last, I spent the last um, first few weeks actually uh, cleaning out my closets. And Ooh, good it, was, idea. it was both a good exercise because certainly I needed to do it, but it was also a very therapeutic thing to do. And I literally ended up with more than 15 huge garbage bags filled with clothes. Um, and like I we all- clothes. I want your clothes. I want your clothes. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a best style. <laughs> like eBay next week. Um, but, I, but I just realized that I- held on to way too much. And I also, you know, I keep everything, thank you notes, Christmas cards, gradu graduation cards, whatever. And I had to go through all of those and keep the ones that really meant something to me. And I came across a few from, and I think you remember Dick Half uh, from Wilshire Designs who actually brought me into the industry. He was my mentor. Yeah. He was the one that let me do Kata. He's, you know, he's still a very close friend and mentor to me. Um, but when I first started, you know, I was, an, I was an optometrist, I didn't know anything about eyewear design, and he would slip me notes after trips, you know, in a hotel after uh, a purchasing trip, and I found one that said, um, you know, you're doing a great job, kid, keep it up, you know, things like <laughs> that. I think that's, that was so inspiring. So, it was, so one, I think it's about doing with less and doing with things that really matter, kind of taking that Marie Kondo approach of really keeping things that make us happy and that have some meaning to us. And I think that's the same thing with eyewear and what we put out to our clients and our customers and ultimately to their clients is really sell things that... Wait, does this spark joy? I'm sorry? Does this spark joy? I can't see. I have a progressive on. <laughs> no, toss it. Spark joy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, toss it. Does this part um, but that, you know, everybody from the end consumer to our retailers to the wholesalers, you know, we only put out things that are meaningful, uh, that that um, bring us joy, that have some reason to be, and everything else, the excess, you know, get rid of. Yeah. And I think the other thing is I've noticed, um, I, you know, I, I live in a very special community up in Sausalito where all our neighbors came together. They would, would go shopping for each other. They'd leave food on the doorstep. We'd still have cocktail hours and coffees. And it's that sense of community. And one of our reps um, has offered to one of our retailers, uh, or at all his accounts actually, because he's not able to visit customers to actually come into their stores and clean frames. Mm. Because that's something wow. that- Wow. Wow. And it really is, uh, Logan, uh, um, who's a, you know, a new account executive, but to me that was really extremely mm, touching. Amazing. You wow. Your time like that yeah. to help uh, you know, our partners out because we're all, I mean, it sounds so trite to say it, so I hate to say it, but we are all sort of in this together. So together we can Absolutely. Make, make things better than they currently are. Mm -hmm. so, it, so for me, it's a little bit more of a... Um, uh, emotional time and um, you know I, putting the economics aside uh, this is really a time to kind of like Gay said to reset rethink reposition ourselves um, more personally and only bring things into our life that really have meaning and only keep the goodness and keep the badness out that's wonderful well those are profound words and really great advice and gosh so much you know knowledge here and so many incredible perspectives. I, Terrence, I, do we have some questions that we'd like to head into, or do we have time for questions? You know, Aaron, all the questions, they were answered. Uh, you know, we, oh, good. Uh, during, during the panel, so the designers did an excellent job hitting on what people wanted to hear. And Aaron, thank you. You did an amazing job conducting that panel. <laughs> And the questions very you used kind. to draw everyone out. I, so, I'll tell you, th these folks made it easy. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. You know, I, I would have, there was a lot of, the, all the designers dropped so many powerful gems on the session that people can learn from and take into their business or retail or design end. So thank you all for volunteering your time and being here. Uh, and speaking of dropping, I did the count. And out of the four designers, only seven f bombs were dropped during the <laughs> session. So that is a, that is that, that, that is an all-time all low. <laughs> I have to say, my team must be very proud of me because I didn't drop anyone 
and you could have had <laughs> any member of my team. I think I did an F every two seconds. So people well, so not here. You can be proud of me. Oh, uh, very <laughs> good, very I'm good. Afraid of the one who dropped the seven. Did I drop the I seven? No. But I count them. It was I like, think Selena oh, has an oh, edge. Yes, yes, yes. You go. Yes, there but, you go. but but one Sorry, question: so Did it? Did the f bomb spark joy? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, any, anything Salima says sparks joy. All right, so, so that's amazing. That's amazing. So, hey, by so the way, we... by the way, I just want to say one thing. I have four dogs. I never do Zoom because I'm afraid they would bark. They can. So amazing! I saw you show I them. No, they no, love it like asleep. Oh my God! This is so <laughs> quiet. Oh, you put them to well sleep. Done. We will put them to sleep. <laughs> well I done. <laughs> well done. So everybody, thank I want to thank. Yes, want to thank everybody. Thank a few, a few announcements before we go. As you know, the Eye to Eye series, we have two sessions each week. Usually, happy hour on Fridays. Wednesday is coffee talk. Starting next week, we'll be going down to just one session, which will be Wednesday Coffee Talk. It'll be every Wednesday at 12.15. Uh, so actually, this was actually our last happy hour. You guys are the series finale for happy hour. What a way to go out uh, as well. So we've been doing this happy hour for over six weeks. Wow. It's been really amazing. We've had a total of over 18 people that participated in happy hour. What we'll be doing with Coffee Talk, we'll be alternating it. One week, we'll have a business topic. The next week we'll have something that inspires and sparks joy each week. So next you week. Have to, you have to have Selima on it. Very absolutely, okay. absolutely. <laughs> the co-host, the co-host, the co-host. The co so next week on uh, the Vision Council, we're putting on uh, reopeneyecare.com, uh, a session that will be moderated by Dr. Gary Gerber. Um, the week after will be the next generation of eyewear. Um, and that will be put on and moderated by yours truly, Terrence, optical poet. Wow. speaking to a few uh, millennial designers and retailers. But take a look at the schedule, we'll post it. Oh, there it is, Olivia, thank you. Take a look at the link, we'll update it very shortly. You'll see the schedule of events happening every Wednesday at 12.15 Eastern as well. Please also take the survey. There's a survey that's posted in the uh, chat box that's gonna help us for the direction of what we're going with our virtual eye-to-eye -eye series. So any feedback is necessary. But we wanna thank you all to our panelists, Thank you everyone for being here. Dr. Asset, thank you for being here. Marge Axelrod, thank you for being here. Ed Viner, we appreciate it. Alicia, Amaka, uh, John, we appreciate you being here. There's so many people that are Vina, involved for the time Michael, being here. So, Hogan, yes. Hello, thank yeah. you. Everybody. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And please also take a poll that just popped up on your screen, but we're signing off. Everybody have an amazing weekend and that's it for happy hour. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 You Thank guys you were guys. amazing. You were amazing. amazing. That was awesome. That was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy drink. There you go, Blake. There you go. It's now like 3 p.m. in L.A. So you're fine. Right. <laughs> that was pretty. Where's my wine? <laughs> oh, man. So, so Alem, I got a reminder that came on my phone yesterday, and it said, oh, one year since this happened, and it was the day that me and Alem met. There's a picture oh, of Alem man. and I. Aww. Isn't that crazy? I said, it's only been one year? That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I feel like I know you forever. I, just I know, I know. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy. So I, I was like, wow. So I know, I know. The picture, of course, was Alem and I having a drink. We have a, I don't know if you remember, you know her, but uh, I met my, I was talking to you about you to my friend Brie. She's married with Adam on Linus. She used to be a stylist and she knows you very well. And like you, you, you will remember later I'll text you. Yeah, Brie, yeah, over my text, Brie, because the name shows, yeah. So. Your name always come up being like the nicest person, the funniest person. So it's a, you, you're bigger than life, just so you know. Oh, thank you. Merci. Merci, ma chérie. All right, guys. All right, Salima. Bye, Gay. Bye, Bye. 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 Um, Aaron, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Terrence. Thank you. You're hey, we'll see fantastic. You we'll see you next week. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, Salima, I'll see you next week. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so jealous. I emptied the bottle. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, boy. Thank you, Gay. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Take care. Bye. Be Liv. safe, Aaron. Thank you. Yeah, that Aaron, was great. Thank you. That was really good. Really yeah, well thank done. Thank you, Aaron. This was great. Thank you. Yeah. Aaron, thank it's you so very nice much. to see you. Hi. <laughs> oh my gosh, Angela, how are you? Good. I just unmuted, but I miss That's everybody. Good. These are so great. Thank you. Oh, I know. Isn't it nice? It's crazy. It's like our new normal that we get to see everybody like this, but at least we see each other, right? Uh, exactly. Catch up. Yep. You know, All right. Good. I'm, I'm going to highlights. dinner with the kids. This oh, have fun. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> one, one, one of my Friday highlights is watching Odin design eyewear in, man, in, uh, in the background. I love it. I know. Oh, it's I love so great. It. Isn't that great? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pin you real quick. Uh, it's just like, I love the background always, the, 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 the workshop and everything. It's like, it's amazing. That's great. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, I, oh, Liv, do you need anything from me? Nope, we're all set. We're good? Erin, thank yep. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, and everybody, Liv, for joining. Will you guys have a recording of this that we can grab and we can put on our site? Or yeah, Monday. it'll be up uh, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, usually by Monday. OK. Yep. And yep. it's on your it. site? It's on the Vision It's on YouTube. Site? I'll you share it on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Oh, perfect. That'd be yeah, awesome. I'll and then I'll we'll carry on. I'll help us get it up there. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Bye. All right, Aaron. Bye. Have fun. Have a good weekend. All right. All right. Bye now.